What is good, CGS fam? You are now listening to episode 58 of True Two Sides. What's going on, everyone, and welcome to episode 58 of True to Size. We are a weekly podcast centered around the wild world of sneakers. I will be your host today. My name is Lawrence Hopkins, and I'm joined by the rest of the team at Canada Got Soul, Joel Hernandez. Let's go, Raptors. <laughs> and Alvin Martinez. Let's go, Leafs. <laughs> They don't use that chant, do they? <laughs> no, they don't. <laughs> go Leafs, go. <laughs> go, Leafs, go. Um, by the time you guys hear this, this is going to be irrelevant because the game is, uh, games have already going to have happened. But we're yeah, kind of partially in the episode, partially watching the games on the TV behind us. Um, so if you hear a random cheer thing, it's a, it's a, it's a thing. It's a thing. <laughs> um, but yeah, once again, we're just going to look like we're living in the past because you're going to already know the result of this game. Yeah, <laughs> it's probably going to be on to the next series and yeah. out of everybody's memory yeah, yeah, by yeah. that point. This week on True to Size, we're going to try and get to our many EEE messages that we received Ooh, after yeah. our uh, ODTO right. feature episode. Um, we had a very busy sneaker week once again. Uh, so previously in Kicks is popping again. And our main discussion is going to make for some very quality content as we talk about quality. (sighs) But first, Alvin. (sighs) Fire round. Nice. Nice. We like to start every show with a quick hitting question from you, our listeners. And this week's question comes from good friend of the show and I think possibly new fire round champion at MD Kovacs. From uh, New Jersey, Jersey City. What up, Matt? Matt, right? Yes, sir. Matt. Um, he says, this is actually a really good one. Hey, guys. Quick fire round. Yesterday, I had a situation where I had to chill with my wife's friend's husband, who at best sees shoes as foot covers. Needless to say, we didn't have much in common, but he was a nice dude. Having said that, what's your go-to topic when talking to non-sneaker people? Ooh. Cool. I usually go sports, and with Tiger winning, it was mm-hmm. easy. But what do you guys go with? Anything relevant, man. Just yeah. topics. Talk, talk about weed. Talk about like <laughs> weather. Anything stuff. new and like relevant in the world is usually what I go for. Yeah. Because even if I don't know what I'm talking about, the other person usually does. Yeah, true. And they'll so, just get excited about it. Yeah. 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 And yeah you just I, keep probing. Like, oh, yeah? Like, what? How do you like it? <laughs> yeah, what do you a, think about is it? Is that a good straight? Were you high as fuck or not? <laughs> stuff like that. Like, just keep probing. Like, so long as you're asking questions, they're not going to stop talking. And it's going to make it seem like you're yeah. really interested, even if you aren't. Yeah, mm-hmm. I definitely lead off with the weather. I agree, Joel. <laughs> yeah. Whether it's nice or not. It's mm-hmm. either one of those two, really. There's just yeah. two. And then, it's nice outside, huh? Or, man, yeah, this no. weather sucks. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. You it's can start the from breaker. there. Yeah. It's always the icebreaker. And, yeah, sports is good, mm-hmm. especially around playoff time. Like, mm-hmm. that's all anybody cares about is sports. Even yeah. if they're not into it, Facts. they just know what's going on. Yeah. Facts. Um, or, yeah. Like, if they have a cool hat or something, like, yeah. it's a nice hat. Hey, man, nice hat. I know. Assuming... He doesn't know about shoes. He probably, he probably is not a super uh, hat guy either. <laughs> oh, thanks. My, my girlfriend got it for me. Oh, yeah. yeah. Thanks. Okay. Uh, my mom got it for me three years ago for Christmas. And uh, <laughs> I wear it every day. Um, that was a good question. I like these non-sneaker related fire yeah, round questions. Cool, so man. thank you, MD Kovacs from New Jersey. If you would like to submit a question for the fire round and have us answered on the pod like Matt from New Jersey, please shoot us a message on Instagram or email us at canadagotsoul at gmail.com. Uh, Next up, the CGS picks. Each week, we all pick an upcoming sneaker to analyze, dissect, and give our thoughts on. Then we decide if it's poop, scoop, whoop de whoop, or Alvin's phrase. Cute. Cute. Let's start with Alvin this week. What do you got for us? This week, I got the Jason Tatum X Nike Air Max 97, inspired by St. Louis hometown. Mm-hmm. So... It's it's a Air Max 97, like I said. The upper consists of a black and white. No, sorry, black and red. <laughs> um, and then the main, I I would say like the main mudguard, I guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Has like a uh, all over print of. I don't even know what. It I don't is. know. It might be Jason Tatum tattoos or something like that. The midsole looks like it's silver as well, and then the bubble is red. Um, pretty cool shoe. Uh, I'm kind of feeling the. 
the whole working with you know athletes and allowing them to do NSW um, yeah, speakers kind of thing, <clears throat> which is dope. So um, yeah, I don't know if I'm a really big fan of these ones though. Yeah, I don't know how uh, I feel about these specifically. I, I feel <laughs> like you know a lot more could have been done. But that's just me. You guys let me know on EEE if you guys have a different opinion. Please. Um, and then, like, the tongue itself features, like, Tatum on one shoe and then the deuce on the other one. Uh, I guess that's his nickname. His or number. it could be his son. I think or, it's his number. I think he's number two, isn't he? And his son's name's Deuce, I think. Or 22. I don't know. Some, I don't know. So, no, so much research we do. He's zero, no? <laughs> Is he zero? I think he's zero. Yo, EEE. I don't know. Yeah. Please. Hey, Aaron, I'm calling you out. Someone I know you're a Boston know. man. Yeah. Ooh. Boston fan. Actually, so, don't slide husband. into the DMs if you're slide a Boston in there, man. Slide in there, bro. <laughs> slide into my personal one then. You dig? <laughs> you're um, these are just these are just a cute. I mean, the concept is cool, but like uh, the actual colorway is not uh, is not my thing. So yeah, I definitely agree with you. I'm a fan of uh, them giving NSW shoes to yeah. signature athletes, especially when they're not the huge ones. Yeah, like I mean, not the hu- they're huge athletes, but I mean, like usually it's like a LeBron or it's a Kobe mm-hmm. or it's a Kate, like people who already have a signature shoe. Mm-hmm. They did like this article says they did with Jason Tatum and they did it with OBJ, they yep. did it with Neymar. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's cool to see them allow other Nike athletes get the opportunity to do this and. Yeah, the Neymar stuff is pretty cool. I do like the I mean, Neymar stuff. And the OBJ stuff too, actually. Who's really trying to cop shocks unless it's by, yeah, like, Neymar. by <laughs> Neymar. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah, no, it's, it's definitely gonna, cool. It's uh, going to be the only shocks to sell out since Vince Carter. <laughs> <for real. laughs> yeah. um, what do you rate them, Alvin? What it's, do you think? It's a, it's a cute. It's just cute. It's not a poop, but I wouldn't cop them. They're just, they're just cool. Just cool? Yeah, it's cute. Just a cool, cool, cute it's shoe? It's a cute, cool, very cute, cool shoe. <laughs> Back um, I'm going to go next. Um, and for the second week in a row, I don't know if I need to go to the doctor. I picked a New Balance. i seen that. Um, no. So I chose the New Balance 1500 with a tribal upper. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so it's the 30th anniversary of the 1500 this year. I didn't know that. And oh, so New Balance yes. has been celebrating with a bunch of different releases of the 1500. These specifically are made in England. As I'm, mm-hmm. sh- I think most of the 1500s are, but I could be wrong. E e e dat. Um, but yeah, this specific one is different for New Balance. Very different. It's not something you would usually see from a very reserved brand, I guess mm-hmm. you would say. But the entire upper is uh, tribal patterns with like the the mud guard, and then a lot of the upper, and then you've got a black tongue, black laces, black sole, the gum outsole, which is super slept on. Yeah, and then uh, the white on the white. New Balance N. I wonder if there's... Is there a name for that logo? Just the N? E-E-E that. I'm just going to... If I don't know something, I'm just going to tell somebody else to tell me. (laughs) Um, But yeah, it's a really, really, really clean shoe. Like I said, it's very different for New Balance to come out with something like this. But I'm... Especially when it's not a collab. But I am a fan. The only thing I think I would change is I think there's too much black. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I think that was the only thing that threw me off when I looked at it. I really like the upper. But I think the tongue and the lining should have been white. Mm-hmm. And then along with the laces should have been white as well. Uh but yeah, they're cute. I don't know if I would buy it because uh one eighty five USD price tag or one eighty, sorry, USD price tag in Canada is two fifty probably. Yeah, around a little bit up. steep for me. Uh but if you're interested, they drop on May fourth. May the fourth be with you. These are cute. Did you see the other ones that dro- uh that are dropping? I think it's a collab with end. I did not. They look very similar. Oh yeah. Just less like Less less pattern less on tribal. it. Yeah, less tribal on it. <clears throat> but still oh, funky. Okay. Yeah, it's still pretty cool. I'll pull it up, see if that, that Joel do his thing. And I'll, I'll yeah, go ahead, Joel. What do you got for us? Okay, so what I got, um, I got the Nike Zoom GP, Gary Payton. Um, it's their it's their Seattle's uh, supersonic, um, I guess, their old, or I don't know how to call it, but... but <laughs> It's like the, it's oh, to, yeah? to commemorate their That was uh, nice. Oh, yeah, yeah. Run. It's an ode to them? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Something like what that. You're trying to say? Yeah. Okay. For the uniforms. <laughs> okay. Because they got like the... Inspired it's, by... It's inspired pretty oh. much, yeah. Because they get the... Where is... What is this? It's the... Uh, their 90s run or something like that. Of the um, the 96... They made it to the 96 finals against the... Uh, obviously the 72-10 Bulls. Sucks, um, sucks to be those guys. Yeah, man. <laughs> but yeah, man. These are dope. Um... I really, really like them. It's, it's got the, uh, I, I don't really know the name of the green, but it's like a hunter green, mm-hmm. um, with that, that burgundy. It's, it's pretty much the, 
uniform the jersey, that they had. Yeah, yeah the jersey. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's the uh, the infamous uh, Zoom Gary Payton's. It the looks glove. like they're they're retroing like, them back. Like, it looks like a low glove almost. Yeah, it does. The glove yeah. is like a mid high cut. Yeah. Um, I looked into it, uh, and it originally released back in '99. True. Um, it's his uh, very first official signature shoe. Oh. Um, the Zoom Flight 98, which was afterwards, mm-hmm. or sorry, before it, um, it had like the, uh, the jacket. So it's pretty much the same thing, but instead of the, the zipper of the jacket, mm-hmm. it's, it's like a buckle. Oh, okay. So with the, uh, the Zoom GPs, it's got a buckle on it. Um, but yeah, cool. it's got the five dots from the Alpha Project. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm, I'm pretty sure they should really do something like that again for Nike basketball. Like bring back the Alpha Project. Mm-hmm. Um, it was the for those that don't know, the Alpha Project. Um, it was pretty much Nike's top technologies, and, and and they pushed pretty much the boundaries of each shoe design of the of the. Um, I guess it went throughout the all boards of each each athlete oh, that they okay. used. They had like the Garnet Three, the uh, Shocks BB Fours, um, the GPS, the Hyper Flights, Ultra Flights. And even the Prestos, each of the shoes, each of the shoes, they all had the five dots, mm-hmm. which is oh, like the, um, the Alpha yeah. Project. That's sick. True. But yeah, man, so it's it's a dope shoe. Um, it releases in May, but before that, they're going to be dropping the the OG black and white Gary Payton. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, those are pretty dope. Um, it's a cop for me, for Jomar, for Ball. <laughs> yeah. Because, uh, yeah, man, I think he'll pretty, he'll, he'll like these um, if they make them in new sizes. But yeah, they dropped May eighteenth the uh, the Seattle Supersonic colorway, uh, and it goes for one fifty US. Mm. <laughs> that should be a new thing if it's a if it's a cop and if it's a cop for Joe Mar because those are two very different things. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know, very different. Very different. Uh, next up this week in kicks now is the part of the show where we discuss the current headlines and happenings in the world of sneakers. It's a pretty interesting week this week. Um, mm-hmm. First up, we'll start big. Uh, Pada and Jordan are collabing. Mm. So yeah, over the weekend, uh, the official Pada Instagram page teased just basically the Jordan logo and the Pada, and the Pada. Pada logo. Oh, yeah, and they yeah. said, coming soon. And then obviously the rumor mill started uh, swirling and then pictures leaked of what shoe it was. And it was a Jordan 7. And the world collectively went... Yeah. It could have been so great. I mean, I don't know if I'm I'm sure I'm just speaking for myself, but you guys can let me know what you think after. Mm-hmm. But I I'm disappointed with how they look. Uh I think it could have been a lot, like I said. I think it should have been pastelli or bright or mm-hmm. like it's definitely unique. It's got the pad of branding on the midsole and it's a gray and it looks like dark Bordeaux. brown or Bordeaux ish like looking Bordeaux-ish, upper, yeah. yeah. But it's just uh, it's nothing special to me. Nothing like it really looks pumped. like a regular GR Jordan Seven. They slap the Pada logo yeah. on the bottom. That was kind of always my beef with the Fragment Jordan One. Like it just mm. looked like it could have been a, a like a GR with the, mm. the logo slapped on the heel. Yeah. yeah. Um, obviously different context, but still. Yeah. What do you guys think about this uh, this release? I don't know. There's like no Pada corduroy. Yeah. There's no Pada. Like you said, there's nothing that pops out and it screams out Pada. Except for the Pada written Except on the Except for the logo, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, I don't know. Just like I said, it's like a Bordeaux with the Pada midsole. That's exactly what it reminded me of. What do you think of it, album? Yeah, no, it's soft. <laughs> not it, a fan? Like, yeah. I don't know. I feel like they, they may have not gotten the freedom that they wanted. Yeah, that's definitely a Possibly. possibility. So they yeah. Yeah. chose like brown and cream. Yeah. <laughs> but out Sorry. of all the out of all the colors yeah. within the world. You chose the, the darkest. It like looks... it would have you you could have just made it like a similar color to one of your Air Maxes that you That's what I made. that I mean yeah. or I thought like it was gonna be something to, original. I thought it was gonna be you know an ode I mean? to a, an Air Max. Yeah. Um, at least something sort of like it. But nothing yeah you don't have to make it exact no like, yeah I mean, those... even just a little bit like quarter like joel said jed's joel said corduroy yeah. or denim or yeah. like imagine denim yeah. on a jordan 7 that'd be pretty cool oh my or corduroy God. or anything or polka dots or something yeah. like when i imagine pada and para i imagine like funky and like different and yeah. unique and this is just like the like it looks like a sad day yeah <laughs> like, it like it looks like there's a filter on it and the filter's name is yeah. sad day 
And like you could have put so much more colors into like the midsole. Like you know how they have those like peaks? the triangles. Yeah, you know, the triangles. Yeah, yeah. you could have made each of those. Imagine a color. even if it was the same uh, bland or simple. I'm gonna say bland, simple upper with bright colors on the little uh, yeah. triangles or spikes. Yeah. Whatever. That'd be pretty cool. Or you could have made pattern like a stupid color too. Yeah, like, make, put them, yeah. Like, make it some bright blue or, some or something. Like anything. Yeah. I don't this know. Is, I don't know. This is something like a customizer can make easily. Yeah, exactly. It's yeah. nothing I mean? special to Just me. Just get a Bordeaux, black out the triangles, slap pad on it, and you're done. The apparel's going to be dope, though. I feel yeah, like. I, I yeah, feel like the apparel course, will be yeah. cool. You know what I mean? Um, but the shoe... The shoe's and, underwhelming. <laughs> yeah. Very. I'm going to look very. up for the apparel. I was hoping that it was just like one of those false rumor things like we talked about, or I think yeah. John has talked about uh, Heads Ain't Ready, good friend of the show, mm. said you can't believe you, everything you read on the internet, but I think Pada actually posted a picture of these... Yeah, on their page, so it's officially I mean, official. We'll see, man. It's not too late. Please change it. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> uh, next up, so uh, yesterday, Monday was Earth Day. Mm-hmm. I don't know, did you guys mm-hmm. see what Adidas did? It wasn't yesterday, but it's good timing on their part. So they yeah. created a fully recyclable shoe, fully recyclable. Ooh. So obviously their uh, partnership or their foot in the water, I close in the water, I guess you could say, mm-hmm. with this uh, environmentalist. T- uh, stuff started with Parley. Yeah, mm-hmm. they did the whole uh, Parley collection. They, Parley. I think it's still ongoing. Actually, they yeah, do it a lot yeah. where they take the recycled plastic mm-hmm. from the ocean, and now they've created a fully recyclable shoe, completely made of recyclable uh, materials, and it's all made of the same material. Huh. So wow. from the upper to the boost to the stripes to the heel frame to the torsion bar, everything is made of the exact same material. So what the idea behind it is, is that the idea is when you eventually own a pair, you're not owning the shoe per se, you're owning a chunk of material because mm-hmm. it's all the same material. It's like you're holding a, a newspaper or cardboard, like mm-hmm. something that you can reuse for something else. Mm-hmm. Um, so as part of a natural full circle process, the shoes can be returned to Adidas where they'll recycle it into a new sneaker and send it back to you, Oh, oh that's which cool. is really cool. Yeah. That's so... Cool. That's what the brand ideally wants to accomplish, but the logistics obviously are going to be tricky. Yeah, <laughs> that sounds sure. super tricky. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So I'm ass- like, you can assume that the number will be pretty limited to start. Yeah. I think they mm-hmm. just released them last week to like influencers and media and stuff in like 200 ish range. Um, and prices will probably be high. You can assume that too because like yeah. organic fruits, organic. that kind of stuff is not cheap. <laughs> organic. Uh, but the wider global release is set for 2021. So we have mm. a little bit of time to wait for oh. that. Yeah. But very cool though. Um, it's not a unique looking shoe by any means. Like it looks like an Ultra Boost or mm. anything else like that. But just uh, the whole inspiration and obviously the materials and stuff is really cool to me. Like, for sure. All, that's the main thing when I first saw like pictures and I started reading about it. And it said it's all one material, it's fully recyclable, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, but what about the Boost? Mm-hmm. Like, isn't Boost just Boost? Like, it's yeah. its own separate thing. And then when I read that the Boost was actually made of the same material wow. as the entire rest of the shoe, hmm. like, that's really cool. That you can literally just squish it, like, rip it apart and make it into something new. That's awesome. That's so cool. Fact. Wow. Um, next up, since we haven't talked about Nike Adapt BB in almost, what, a, it's like a, been a month, I think. Well, We're overdue. Yeah, been a um, so Nike is attempting to trademark the word footwear. But wait. <gasps> yeah, you guys will look at me weird. Everyone <laughs> listening will, will give a funky face. But it's spelled <laughs> F-O-O-T-W-A-R-E. Oh. Footwear oh, as in mixed software. with software. <laughs> so obviously this is stemming from the Nike Adapt BB. They mm-hmm. have like a new smart sneaker. So yeah. the relation to the word would be trademarked in the sense that any computer hardware modules for receiving, processing, and transmitting data in Internet of Things electronic devices, whatever that means, would be trademarked. So yeah. that's what the word means. Makes sense. If that makes any sense yeah. at all, <laughs> any smart shoe, <laughs> that word relating to it is trademarked. No one else can use it. I yeah, think that's yeah. first of all really clever. That's a cool name. Stupid smart. Um, we should probably just footwear. Throw- that's so footwear funny. software. <laughs> Not bad, right? Yeah. And then like a dad joke. Oh, that was it. I thought we had one more. <laughs> it is a dad joke. It's like Nike playing a full dad joke <laughs> on everybody. Um, next up, we're gonna fly through this episode because we want to watch sports. Um, previously in kicks this is the part of the show where we review our latest pickups and recap the latest happenings in our sneaker lives wow the leaves are down zero two right now 
Maybe we'll yeah. slow down the episode. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we had a really busy week last week. Crazy. Uh, like a crazy Stupid. week. It felt like it was like a month. Uh, yeah. So let's start off. Uh, Alvin, why don't you tell us about ODTO? Give us the whole spiel. Because oh, our week man. with ODTO started on Tuesday. ODTO, like what? Like it's it's essentially a museum. Um, if you haven't been yet, you need to go. Uh, please, please get there and tell them we sent and, and, you. And don't be intimidated. As 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 much as Shaheen does not like to smile, he's a really cool dude. He is, man. Uh, same thing with you know Tetra, mm -hmm. and same thing with Godfrey. Same thing with anyone who the whole staff, works. man. Even yeah, when we were there, they were just talking to us, yeah, and chopping it up. Yeah, really, really cool people, man. Like it's it's definitely one of those spots. I think they're bringing it back. Like one of those spots, like you could back in the day, just go in and just talk and just chop it up about mm -hmm. random shit. Yeah. Um, I mean, if you want to talk about sneakers, go ahead. But like, you can literally just go in there and just chat with them. Yes. Um. And then, man, like, just all the initiatives that they're trying to put through. Like, if you guys don't listen to the pod, like, a lot of community things that they're trying to put through. Mm -hmm. And I think the uh, the pinball thing just started. Yeah, they yeah, yeah. Today. yeah. If you yeah, want yeah. to tell them about that real quick, I don't know if you. I'm assuming um, everybody listened last week, but I was gonna tell you anyways. You can hear it again. Did. You better have. Go back um, and listen right now. Stop this episode. Yeah. And go back and listen to that one because that one's better than this one. So they're having, <laughs> if I'm not mistaken, it's a it's a it's a monthly contest. Yeah, it's uh, mm -hmm. run monthly. Um, so it's a monthly contest, and whoever can attain the highest score on that pinball machine will essentially get half of the proceeds that were used to get the highest score within the pillball machine. <laughs> and then the other half, uh, they, they get to choose the um, charity or, you know, cause that they want to put the money towards. Or whatever, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and that's dope, man. That's like, so dope. That's crazy. That's when you know these guys aren't just after the money. Like, For sure. It's so different. You know what I mean? There, and, 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 it's so different. Man, like <laughs> the stuff that you get to see in the store from the floor to the stock that they have and... Even just that middle section where they just have stuff on the display. Art and yeah, it was cool to hear him say, I mean, walking in, obviously it's a store, yeah. but he said that the whole middle glass panel will probably never be sold. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like that's just stuff for people to come in and see stuff yeah. that they'll probably never see yeah. again in their life. Yeah. Like the yeah, auto lacing mags or all mm. the cause companions or all yeah. the Supreme yeah. LV stuff. Or I mean, we can keep going. The Craig Sager Air Force One. Oh my God. Or the whole Yeezy one set or the whole Yeezy two set mm. or whatever the hell else was in there. Um, like just such a cool store, such a cool vibe. Yeah, like man. really mm. nice guys. Yeah. Like you said, like just one of those places you can just go and chill and chop it up. Was mm -hmm. it during the during the launch? It was raining, or during their opening grand opening? It was raining, so they handed out their umbrellas branded with ODTO. Branded with ODTO, which is obviously it's a marketing thing, but at mm -hmm. the same time, like man, like you're just protecting. Yeah, who does that? Your no one does that. You know what I mean? Like, like you're, you're looking out for that? people, bro. Like big brands that make billions no, like, a year don't do that. Yeah. No. And I seen them like you know on their Insta story just handing out pizza. Mm -hmm. Yeah, shout man. out to David Food, Boo. He drinks, was out there. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Like man, like you you don't see that, and if you do, it's it's crazy rare. And uh, just the whole movement that they're going through, and for sure, you know their their vibe is is good for the city. I feel. I love that shit, man. Yeah. Like they're gonna do really good things for the city, yeah. and not just in the small sense of uh, just Toronto. I think mm -hmm. Canada and worldwide. I think oh, yeah, sure. start something yeah. really yeah. really cool. Uh, it gives me like NetMag vibes, if that makes sense. Yeah, oh, like yeah. NetMag is a real sell reseller, obviously, but yeah. he doesn't give you the vibe of a reseller. He doesn't no. care about the money. Like he's written mm -hmm. blogs about how it's not about the money; it's yeah, about the relationships, all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. And uh, the ODTO guys have echoed that same sentiment. Mm -hmm. Boom, segue. <laughs> what did we do on Saturday, Joel? <laughs> we went to <laughs> kick bricks, <laughs> presented by. Netmag. Our friend. Our friend. Tell us about it, Joe Dooney. Um, it was dope, man. Like he he had he sent it out like some some invites. Um uh, we we're fortunate to to be one of them. Um three of them. Three of them. Well, actually, four, four of them. Of them. Four, yeah. Five of them, actually. Do Do <laughs> five of us went. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh Dooney Jr. came, um, Soul Purpose ran shotgun, so mm -hmm. he came along too. Um but yeah, man, it was dope. They had it over at the Citizen Bar, mm -hmm. right? Bar, yeah, the Citizen yeah. Bar, Grill, Resto. Yeah, so he had like the lounge. whole back yeah. <laughs> just sectioned off just for very VIP, VIP, VIP very like, VIP, like, very VIP. Like, felt VIP like, for sure. Crazy heads were there, like I 
Just bro, way the whole too many. squad, the whole yeah, squad, everybody the whole was there. squad was there, man. It was like huge a, names in Toronto. Soul Exchange there. on the sexy side, beast. yeah, for yeah. real, yeah, yeah. That was dope. Who, finally, finally to meet sexy, sexy beast. beast. Yeah, <laughs> set s eight x y beast. Yeah, sexy yeah. beast. Shout out to sexy. sexy beast, man. Who else? Andrew Fung, Kim's yeah, convenience. Fung. He came through too. I had actually haven't met him in person yet, so that was nice to yeah. meet him. Yeah. Who else was there? Everybody, man. Yeah, like, man. literally everybody. anybody I could think of Hardy that I would girl, want. Lays, Hardy Girl, Lay, Shango, Crew. Netmag was there. Like, <laughs> everybody. Star- Starwood Chai was there. Starwood Star- Chai. Chai. Uh, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> J.R. Weidman. Shout out to J.R. Weidman yeah, from 306. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, mm-hmm. the whole squad was there. And what? Did, which one did you get? Um, I, I, I sat down and I had the... The Royals mm-hmm. on my on my side. The Royal, uh, the Royal Lego, Lego Jordan, Jordan, Jordan one. ones. Yeah. And then I looked over, and then I saw the SB Pigeon written on the side. And I was like, Yo, I want those instead. So I did like a quick swap. <laughs> a quick little swap. Yes. Yeah. yeah, swap us. <laughs> so then I did that, and then um, I couldn't I couldn't do it, man. The lighting there <laughs> was too dark. It was a, yeah, yeah. It's a, it's a yeah, bar, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Dooney Junior went at it, and he did his. He um, crushed his man. Yeah, Shout he out did to his Jomar. Black he and red his. Jordan ones. Yep. So. But yeah, man, it was dope, man. It was dope. See, the thing is, Alvin's smart because he's like, no, guys, I'm <laughs> just taking pictures. I'm just <laughs> yeah. taking pictures. And he didn't have the pressure of sitting there and building it. Yeah. Because he's just walking around, chopping it up, to people, talking to people. Hey, I'm going to take your time, picture, yeah, get yeah, yeah. action yeah. shots. Yeah. And he can so, take his time at home. And do he's it. A smart there. guy. Yeah. Yeah. One a thing and just. Nah. <laughs> he's a smart guy. I was sitting there like sweating. I know, man. Like, stressing out. <laughs> Dropping started, pieces. Yeah, you drop something and you're like, shit, I'm starting over. Give me a new one. Which one did you get, Alvin? The bread ones. The bread nice. ones. Yeah. Sick. And I, I had, had to, the, man. Yeah, of course. Man. There's honestly no bad one. There like, is they no were, I want, I'm going to collect all of them. You have. This yeah. is the best like, one by far. You. Like, they're so mm. good. I got the Heinekens. The Heinekens. Um, lucky enough, I wore them that night. What a coincidence, Ooh, right? What a coincidence. Right? I didn't even know, man. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, shout out to NetMag. Like, that was super cool. That's Obviously. Fun, man. Just money out of his pocket to do something fun for people yeah. who have supported him. Like yeah. I can't even imagine the bill that he must have fronted. We all got two drink tickets. There was yeah. appetizers floating appetizers around. Yo, like I felt like fries. I was at like a Those branded event. Bomb. Yeah, no, yeah. it was a branded. I felt event like I was at yeah, mm. it, was it was a net mag. mag yeah. it event. felt like I was at a Nike party. Yeah. Like all the sneakerheads were there. Yeah. There was there was a bar. And I basically yeah. had open bar because no one else was drinking except for like me and Jr. Pretty much <laughs> and, and Thomas. And Tom, to, to Tom, Heath Ledger. Oh, yeah. Thomas Wade West was in the. So building. we were just out there yeah, like right. throwing back some brewskis and <laughs> building Lego <laughs> <laughs> on a Saturday night. Yeah, that was uh, sick. yeah, that was really good times. Yeah, and man. while we were there, whew, segue again into my last one. Uh, I finally got to pick up my uh, Reese Forb Hunter Dunks. Ooh. Mm-hmm. Super shout out to NetMag on those. Uh, got a really good deal. Mm-hmm. I almost bought a size 10 from him that he posted in like his member Jeez. sale. Yeah. Um, but, uh, he was like, no way. Like, I'm pretty sure I'll get have one come in. And then literally oh. like a week later, like he had a nine and a half Jeez. come in. One of his unboxings. And it was cheaper. Yeah. And it was yeah. cheaper. Mm-hmm. So I'm super excited about that. Definitely gives me the Justin Timberlake vibes. Obviously not yeah, a new sure. issue at all. For sure. Um, but yeah, when I opened it, I was like, yeah, Man of the Woods has entered the chat with oh, these for ones. Sure. For sure. <laughs> um, next up, the busiest portion of the show, errors, edits, and e-messages. So yeah. I did have to crop a bunch of these out. Just a little disclaimer. Uh-huh. So we're pretty smart guys, but from time to time we make mistakes. So if you catch a slip in, hit us in the DM and we'll let the world know that we goofed. So our OD Toronto episode like popped off like crazy. Like people mm-hmm. loved it. We got a lot of feedback. Everyone was posting about it. Everyone was hitting us up saying nice. you guys did an amazing job. So anyone who gave us uh nice sentiments about it, just know that we appreciate that. Yeah, um I'm I can't I mean, me at the shop. He's like, yeah, random guy at the like, shop. What? Yeah, you the fire, So bro. cool, man. <laughs> so so cool. Um I actually I don't know if I I forgot to mention it uh I think when it happened or the week after it happened, but when I was at the Adidas party, uh, a guy came over. I can't remember his name. I want to say it started with a J, like a Hua. Mm-hmm. Or no, Jarek, something like that. I, I'm so sorry. I forgot your name, bro. Jarek Presto? No, Presto? it wasn't Jarek Presto. Oh, I was going to um, say, it's like, dog, you know that guy. <laughs> it might have been Jarek. No. Jared? I don't know. Jericho? I want to say Jericho. I feel like it was Jericho. Yeah. Maybe Juan. <laughs> I know it was a J somewhere in there. You go but from anyways, <laughs> it's a J. I know it's a J. It maybe with a maybe J. it's Yeriko. Uh, maybe yeah. There you go. See, so he came over at the uh, Adidas party, and I was just standing there with Jill and I think Sean and Keith. Kuya Keith was mm-hmm. there, and he's like, "Hey man, what's up?" And I was like, 
hey, and I'm really bad with like faces and names. So when someone yeah. comes and hails me up, I literally just pretend like I know you yeah. because I, I might. And I just don't remember. Yeah. And he's like, I'm a really big fan of the podcast. Like, really nice to meet you. I love what you guys are doing. And I was like, bro, this is sick. And it's always weird to me that people know what a, a specifically I look like because yeah. I never really yeah. post pictures to my face. Yeah. Um, but shout out to uh, Jay. He, he, Jay. Jay. Shout out to Jay. Shout out to Jay. Jay. Um, that was E. E E E that and let us know your name and let yeah, me man. know. Send us your your Instagram. Yeah, please somebody. because I completely forgot your name and I'm so sorry. That was like two weeks ago. Mm-hmm. But yeah, that was my little side note. Anyways, nice. first up for E E E from Rushy Grant, Mister E E E loves to correct us. <laughs> yeah. This was the related to the bread one re-release rumor that we talked about at ODTO. Mm-hmm. He said E E E. I noticed in episode 57. While Zed sneakerheads, still calling it Zed sneakerheads, mentioned mm-hmm. it on Monday. The info on the breads came from at Coley 2 xs and DJ Folk. I don't know who either of these people are, but sorry to those two people who had the information first. I'm sure they're offended by not getting credit on True to Size. <laughs> um, next up. <laughs> Facts. Joshua Javier Buffard. First of all, that's oh. a sick-ass name. Nice. Yeah. I hope nice. that's his real name. That's this was cool. short and sweet. It's just loving the podcast. Oh, that's nice. nice. That's really nice. I think he Thanks, was one man. of the ones who discovered us from the ODTO. I, I got uh, one. You do. True. Go ahead. I have one more. Two, our, couple uh, more. Go ahead. Our our Oze Brova. Oh, uh, <laughs> underscore, <Crikey>! underscore Gemsey. <laughs> Gemsey. G A M C I. Gemsey. Gemsey. Gemmas. Hey, brav. <laughs> uh, he says you guys are bomb. Found you on Spotify and have started listening from episode one. Damn, you got a long way to go. Much love from the AU fam. If he just started, he's not even going to hear this shout out for like a year. That's okay, man. <laughs> He'll hear it though eventually. In Unless a year, he really listens to it like consistently. Actually, he's not going to make it this far because once he starts hearing the Australian accents, he's out of here. <laughs> <laughs> Forget these guys. Yeah, these, guys are, these guys. These guys are wankers. <laughs> um, <laughs> Crikey. Crikey, these are wankers. <laughs> Throw another shrimp on the barbie and turn this uh, off. <laughs> um, next up, another EEE legend, AA Ron, Sneaker Life Husband. Yes, we bro. just mentioned him. Yeah. He says, You guys are amazing. The podcast just keeps getting better and better. Lawrence, your interview skills are through the roof. You have a straight yeah. radio voice. That's good because I don't have a face for TV. <laughs> um, Kuya Joel, the straight OG with the knowledge. <laughs> and Alvin, holding it down with tons of accents and dad jokes. Yeah. Yeah. Can't wait till we can get two episodes per week. Pause. What I don't the? know about that, man. <laughs> uh, I don't know. <laughs> Too yeah, maybe if you guys start giving us a lot of money. <laughs> to listen. Gotta go to work first. Yeah, if we start yeah. charging uh, f- like full-time money for episodes, then maybe. We'll give you as many as you want. Yeah, if you guys want to <laughs> <Yeah>. start paying <laughs> for this to be our full-time job, <laughs> please yeah. go ahead. And finally, this was a funny one from King Kamba. Yo. Uh, Calgary and Y-Y-C. UK yeah, homie. Yeah, yeah. Yes. He says, just finished last week's episode, pro travel tip. Don't call it a fanny pack in the UK. Fanny equals vagina. Yo. <laughs> you cannot imagine the crazy, horrible looks I got when asking for the newest Nike Blue camo fanny pack. Camo. <laughs> what I mean, if you're looking for a thing, dog, you know, the fanny pack still, dog. Is I don't know if I want it to, I don't want it to be camouflaged, though. <laughs> I don't know how I feel about that portion. Or blue, for that matter. It's called hair dye. You guys remember Blue Waffle? That wasn't good. (laughs) (laughs) Blue Waffle. Next up is NSR, not sneaker related. No sneaker related. (laughs) Crikey. (laughs) We talk about sneakers a lot. So in this weekly segment, we're going to take 30 seconds out of the show to discuss something completely irrelevant to the world of sneakers. And it was my turn this week. So... Related to yesterday being Earth Day, I'm going to start the timer. I'm not even going to use a real timer anymore. It's just fake. Beep started it. Mm-hmm. Uh, my question for you guys is, should Earth Day be a national holiday? If it is, they should ensure that no one is using any sort of electronics. I yeah. think it should be like Earth Hour, where everyone yeah. kind of mm-hmm. tries to play their part. And I think yeah. it should be a day off. Like right now, more Earth- than just an hour. More yeah. Oh, for it should be the whole day. 100%. Yeah. 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 Like it should be, you, people should go out. I mean, you're already supposed to, but when they make it on a Monday, how are you supposed to go out and clean up garbage or something like that? Yeah. I yeah. think it should be a national holiday because right now it's no different than National Sibling Day. And like, that I don't know about matter. you guys, but yeah, exactly. They're fake. They're yeah. fake holidays. Like mm-hmm. the Earth Day is nothing. So <laughs> I think it should be real. I think it should be a statutory holiday. I think it should be a paid day off. 
Like, I don't know about you guys, just speaking from personal opinion, but Earth is my favorite planet. Um, so I think I that we know, should Mars have Mars is a... <laughs> I don't know, man. It's kind of scary Uranus. out there. Uranus. CGS After Dark is starting early tonight, folks. It is starting very early tonight. I'm just going to quickly hit Bang. the buzzer. And we are going to move on to our promos for the week. And this week we have the same two promos we've had for the past little while. The YYC Soldiers Sneaker Swap number five is happening in Calgary on May 25th, mm. running from 12 to 5 at the Chinese Culture Center. The YYC Soldiers are super good friends of the show. Yeah, yeah. If you're in the area, if you're even on the West Coast itself, go by Drive and there, support. Drive there, there, fly there, walk there, run bike, there. Whatever you want. Anything as long as yeah, you get there. Be there. Speaking of be there. Soul Exchange Canada uh -huh. is this weekend. If you're listening to yep, this on today. Saturday, you should go we'll after you've done the yeah. episode. It's now. Yeah, we'll it's now. There. Listen to it at the show yeah. while you're talking to us. Yeah. Wow. Ooh, wow. That's, that's a lot of Canada. While we're live. Inception. Yeah. On Instagram. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> on Instagram. <laughs> Disclaimer. Um, but yeah, anyways, <laughs> that is going on April 27th, which is this Saturday. Uh, Metro Toronto Convention Center, mm -hmm. downtown Front Street, downtown Toronto. From 12 to 6, I'm assuming, correct me if I'm wrong, but vendor tables are probably sold out mm. and tickets are definitely still available. Always available. Always available. Yeah. At the door, too, no? Always yeah, at, at the, the door. door. Too. Yeah. yeah. So we flew through that because we are in a rush to watch sports, but I have a good discussion topic for us this week. And it stemmed from a comment, mini discussion we had with Shaheen last week, mm. uh, where he mentioned that quality on sneakers is kind of irrelevant like i think we brought up new balances mm -hmm. quality being a little bit higher and he kind of just snarked and was like what does that even mean mm -hmm. and i was like okay you have a cool <laughs> store so i can't like what am i gonna say you're probably right but yeah. then i thought about it a little bit more one of those like shower thought moments and i was like you know what maybe it does matter mm -hmm. so we're gonna talk about it mm -hmm. so when we're referring to quality I think that everyone has a different definition, especially pertaining to sneakers. Mm -hmm. What it means, what good quality is, what bad quality is, I think is a very perceptive thing. So why don't we all kind of go in a little triangle here and mm -hmm. talk about what good quality on a shoe is to us, just so we have a baseline mm -hmm. moving forward. Mm -hmm. Alvin, go ahead. You can go first. Supple. Leather. Just supple leather. Supple. Butter suede. Mm -hmm. um, no glue stain. Not no glue stains, because obviously that's tough. But mm -hmm. then again, it's not. So, I mean, <laughs> yeah. I mean, I guess you could say least amount of glue stains and, and just, mm -hmm. just stitching needs to be super, super clean. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you're mostly in it for that kind of stuff. You want soft materials. You want clean cut lines, that kind of thing. I mean, that's what it's, that's, I mean, uh, yeah. For you? Yeah. yeah. What about you, Joel? Um, pretty much the same thing. Like the use of materials for me and the quality of materials for me. Yeah. Um, like the sw the soft suede, mm -hmm. and like you know the nappy kind of suede new book, whatever you want to call like it. Like the longer hair. Yeah, not really longer hair, it. but like you know when you like you rub the suede and it goes like in one Different direction, direction, it goes light, yeah, and yeah, yeah. dark, like that kind of material. Mm -hmm. Like the, yeah. that's just like crazy stuff right there. Um, like the when you push down on the leather, and it makes that kind of. Like crinkles, like it crinkles and yeah. stuff like that. You can see the ripples and that's the creases. quality yeah. material right there. And you know, like like with the glue stains too. Like you got to look along along the midsole, mm -hmm. and to see like you know if there's like you know glue like just splatter up <laughs> and whatever. You know, you you come across those like on shoes, right? So what about uh, that kind of stuff. specifically? I guess referring to Air Max, what about shape? Well, me, yeah, yeah, like the shape, like the whole banana boat mm -hmm. shoe kind of. <laughs> Do you consider that a quality thing, or do you think that's something different? Like, that, I think that's you... something different. Yeah? That's pretty much, like, the way that it's manufactured. Mm. Yeah, the way that it's made, right? Yeah. And, you know, like, yeah, exactly. It's, like, preference. Mm. You want to, like, to look at a certain certain way. You know what I mean? Instead mm. of, like, the whole clog-looking kind of shoe. Yeah. So, but, yeah, man. I think a lot of quality for me comes down to how it wears. Mm -hmm. Like, because we obviously, we wear our shoes. Yeah. Like you can look at like a sale Jordan one, for example, is a good example because I wear them all the time, like still wear them all the time. It's been like two years and I still can't stop wearing them. But like if I were to wipe them down and clean them up a little bit, 
you'd never really know, to be honest. Like, yeah. the material is so soft, which comes back to quality materials, but it wears in so well. It does. Just the way that they used it, the way that they treated it, the way that they finished it, that you can wear it to the ground and the upper. <laughs> if you wipe it down, the creases aren't going to look like... Remember the Jordan 3 toe boxes, how they used to crease one right across the front or air forces yeah. do that a lot air forces. Yeah. one fat crease across the front and that's it i hate that crease so much yeah, it looks so bad, ugly yeah. like i don't mind creases when it looks like you wore the shoe properly when it doesn't yeah. look like i step and i have like a hinge in my toe or something yeah. like that um i want to see creases around the whole toe box like to me that's quality how mm -hmm. it wears in is really yeah. important to me mm -hmm. so the first i think i that i can remember correct me if i'm wrong maybe you guys heard before it that I can remember about quality even being brought up, especially with Jordans, was when the whole remastered thing started. Mm -hmm. Like, do you remember when they started saying, oh, we're going to remaster them, we're going to bring it back, we're going to boost up the quality, like, we mm -hmm. want to do better, all this kind of stuff, we're going to use better materials, blah, 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 blah. Mm -hmm. um, like, did you guys notice quality issues before then? Was it a big thing? Like, because like, I, I never didn't know any better. Mm -hmm. So for me, it was a little bit different because of when I got into, I got into shoes in like 2009 ish. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so those Jordan threes, when they were coming out in 2010, 11, 12, whatever, and they had that one fat crease, I was like, that's just how it is. Mm -hmm. Like, I didn't know that there was a, a bright horizon it somewhere. <laughs> so yeah, like I didn't even have, I didn't know any better. Right. Yeah. So like, do you guys remember quality being even a, a conversation topic before that or? Not necessarily. No. Like, I don't know. I guess my first Jordans that I purchased with my own dime were Black Hat 4s. Mm -hmm. Those never came with no creases. I creased those on my damn own. <laughs> yeah. I made those creases and I'm proud of them. <laughs> um, but no, nah, those came like hella crispy, man. Like everything was smooth. Yeah, like that was that, good material on that. That was, oh man. And that, nice that suede or new mm -hmm. buck was mm -hmm. like butter. Um, and the same thing with like the fire red threes that came out that same year. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No yeah. creases. Yeah. It was just like thick. Yeah. Like, they're just nice. Mm -hmm. Like yeah. firm. I don't even know how to <laughs> describe them. Yeah. Like just solid. Yeah. And I found that the, uh, the paint didn't chip as fast on the yeah, that too. Mm. Of, of that specific mm. time year or, or whatever. Year. Yeah. Yeah. I find that the, the paint was, was better. Yeah. I would say as well. It didn't chip as fast. Mm -hmm. So. It was I mean, probably yeah. It was probably after the, the whole like when they did the the packs, mm, the right? countdown like, packs, the, the countdown packs. I think yeah. that's when it started going downhill. Like you noticed the, it going downhill. Yeah, yeah. Because mm -hmm. the countdown pack was pretty good. I remember the threes being pretty decent. Like yeah. not comparable to last year's. Was it last year? Yeah, last yeah, year's last black. Year's, like last, last year's, year's black cement was really nice leather. Like I said, I didn't even know Jordans could have that. Kind of, <laughs> Jordan threes mm -hmm. could have that kind of leather. But I do remember it being better than the 2011, I think it was, yeah. Black Cement 3. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. But those lasted forever, too. Yeah. But but the, yeah. just the quality, like I said, this the thick pleather, like it's shiny, mm -hmm. synthetic leather. I mean, it's all, it's Jordans. We're not talking real leather anyways. But yeah. yeah. So you did notice it then drop off. Mm -hmm. Was it something to speak upon before that? Like, especially with SBs or Air Maxes in like early 2000s, was it a thing? Like, oh, this one's good quality, this one isn't? Because now it seems like when it comes out, like Shaheen said, when it comes out, everyone has it in hand. The first question is, how's the quality? Yeah. Like, is was that a thing back then or is that a recent thing? Because I don't ever, like in the whatever late, te early mm -hmm. teens of the 2000s, I don't remember it even being a conversation topic. No. It was I think, like, yeah, I think they it's look a recent, good. Recently, like, it's a more recent thing, right? Yeah, like within the last like five years or so, that's when everybody became like just more about like how quality was because it just seemed like we're getting ripped off. Like, yeah, you know, yeah. Paying Especially so much for a pair of shoes. As the prices go up, yeah. yeah. And then you come up with a shoe that, that just creases automatically or there's mm -hmm. like a certain smell to the shoe or, mm -hmm. you know yeah. what I mean? Like, like that kind of stuff. So I think it just... Probably within the last five years or so. So I actually didn't know this, um, but the Fragment Ones were actually the first remastered release hmm. ever. I thought it was uh, Oreos and uh, Legend Blues yeah. or whatever they called it, Columbia Fours. Mm -hmm. I thought that was the first. That's the first one I remember. But I didn't know that Fragments was the first one. Mm -hmm. And I've never but actually held Fragments in my hand. Do they have good leather? No, I don't know. I don't, Not, know. I don't I, it doesn't look like it just by looking at it, it but I could like be the wrong. Most recent. It doesn't like, look like the soft stuff that we get now, like the tumbled yeah. uh soft Jordan 1 leather that we're mm. used to now. Yeah. The the first 
that I remember or like kind of the benchmark I think is Shattered Backboards. Yeah. Jordan 1s. Mm. Like that was Those like the first weird. time that I can remember that people were like, whoa, this leather is crazy. Yeah. Um, which is kind of weird because if Fragments, especially being a collab, you would think that the first one would be like the best. Yeah. But I don't even um, think the, the Fragments have that same leather though. No, it looks like regular like DMP like pack Jordan 1 yeah, leather. Yeah, yeah. Say it, it looks like DMP leather. Mm. So if like, you have a pair and you're rich and you're listening to this, let us know because we clearly don't know. A O O four 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 has one. I think oh, yeah. Andy Kovacs yeah, has one too. He has Ooh, one for sale. Yeah, he does. <laughs> or maybe he sold it. Who knows? Um, but like, so the Jordan one shattered backwards, obviously regarded now. I think as the benchmark. What did we have before? Because Jordan ones were still super hype. Mm-hmm. Like 2013 bread ones, for example. That's mm-hmm. I think that's when it started to kind of ramp back up. Yeah. yeah. Like, what were we getting before? I think everybody compared it to the band ones. That mm, hit that yeah. Very true. That's right. Because yeah. that material, that leather was is just. Is that the best Jordan One leather you can think of? Yeah. Yeah. For me, for me personally, yeah. What year were those? Eleven. Twenty eleven. Yeah. So it took them four because it's shattered right. backwards to twenty fifteen. Took them four years to get Jordan One Jeez. leather good again, and that's after because I guess the the remastered was uh what twenty fourteen I want to say or twenty fifteen ish. I think yeah, so, four yeah. or five years, so let's pay attention to quality again. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And that's as they were raising prices, because even uh, Shattered Backboards would have been 215 Like That's when the 215 Jordan 1 started. Jeez. Do you guys think that the Jordan 1s have the best quality of any of the Jordans? Can you think of a better like, like feeling shoe? Quality and price, yes. Like f- quality for the price yeah, kind of thing? Yeah, yeah, I would say so. Yeah. Yeah? Especially like with the friggin, uh the sales. The oh, sale the ones. Oh my yeah. god. I love them yeah. so much. Those the tur- are stepped on. I stepped on those. I'm not gonna lie. I stepped on those. The turbo greens are pretty dope too, no? The material on those? Possibly. It was okay. Yeah. I don't know. It was, I don't think it was Oh, comparable. the turbo greens, yes. Yeah, yeah. no. Qualidone's not bad. I yeah. wore them the other day. Mm. They seem like they're gonna crease nice. Yeah. 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 And uh, the suede or whatever is on there is mm. pretty alright too. So, so you kind of, you brought up price point and if jordan ones like you said they i th- i think that they they're the best quality coming out right now like mm-hmm. i don't buy many other retros anymore just because they're too expensive like 255 265 is just pushing oh, yeah, it right. 300 bucks after Three tax just, no That's thanks crazy. um but like do you think that jordan ones should cost more now like why do jordan ones cost the least but have the best quality materials i know it's obviously the technology, technology yeah. like there's yeah, no air there's no exposed air yeah. bubble or yeah. whatever anything else there's no bells and whistles but if the quality of the material is that much higher mm-hmm. does it not even out to having the no technology thing like i don't it's understand like a dunk, though. it is like a dunk yeah mm-hmm. but dunks are what 150 dunks are like nothing and half of those have really good quality yeah you know I mean? so it's just the pricing kind of doesn't make sense to me right now i think that by logic standpoint because when we get a really good quality let's say that the cause fours or the tinker mm-hmm. threes or sorry the like the JTH threes, mm. um, the Man of the Woods ones, we pay for it. Like how much? Cause fours retailed at five hundred dollars. Yeah, and the JTHs were what three f- something? I three thirty? I think three thirty plus tax is what they yeah. were. So like three seventy oh. after tax. Yeah. Like when they boost the quality and give you really nice materials on a different shoe, they jump up the price. But Jordan <laughs> ones is just kind of standard. That's okay. I mean, I'm okay with it, but I just <laughs> don't understand why it doesn't really make sense to me. Well, they're not really. I mean, I, fi- I find mm. that the JTH or the Tinker was more of like a special edition collabo kind of type. Mm-hmm. They haven't really had like a stupid Jordan one, have they? Collabo recently? The Unions. Those were retail though, like two fifteen, right? Like, I actually, I like, once know. again, not rich enough to own a pair, so I don't even. I know. mean, resale is resale not, is up there, yeah, yeah, it's, it's up there. But but I feel like those might have gone up in price too. But th- at the same time, like same thing as technology like it doesn't really have much to it much to it so you think it comes down more to tech rather than quality materials for yeah. jordan one at least mm-hmm. yeah because when they gave us a premium re- other retro jordan they're increasing the price like even the black cements last year black cement threes were boosted up by 10 bucks i don't know yeah, if anyone knows they were 265 as opposed to 255 what? yeah yeah they cheated a little Jeez, bit bro. but like it was it was softer leather so i don't know if that was the rationale or if it was just like we know we're gonna sell a trillion pairs of these let's just charge an extra ten dollars but yeah. no one's gonna notice yeah no one's gonna care yeah. but yeah it just doesn't really make sense to me i don't know if anyone else out there in the sneaker world has an answer for me or uh, a reasoning that they can come up with why they think jordan one have the best leather i think arguably of all the retros but they're the least expensive other than technology because they still have air jordan ones have air mm-hmm. just not exposed 
Yeah. I don't know. We'll see what everyone has to say about that. So yeah. just to put it into a little bit of perspective, um, so designer brands, because Shaheen did bring up a good point that there's no like mid tier between Jordans and then designer sneakers. Mm -hmm. So you have designer brands like Gucci. Gucci's made in Italy. Off-White's made in Italy. Louis Vuitton. The leather goods are all made in France, USA, and Spain. And Common Projects, which is kind of the most relatable to us, I think, Italy. Wow. To put it in perspective, Jordan Jeez. and Nike, China. Mm -hmm. And Adidas is Turkey, India, China, Vietnam, Thailand, and Indonesia. Mm -hmm. Which is a lot of different places, yeah. Yeah. Um, once again, some perspective. Off-white, 3.0, off-court shoes. MSRP on set. Essence is 835 canadian oh my goodness um and the common projects achilles low which is just like their basic it kind of looks like a sweet classic yeah, Nike, yeah. if anyone yeah, you know, yeah. or it's like a very slim down air force i guess you could say yeah 540 on essence canadian so like do you think it's worth it no do you would you rather see jordan's made with that kind of quality and would you pay it i feel like it's it's also where it's being made though Oh, for sure. But because again, like, it's like genuine leather. Like we're not getting leather. Organic. Not even organic. It's actual leather. I don't, yeah, it's I organic. could be wrong, but we're definitely not getting actual leather on Jordans. It's still synthetic. Oh, like yeah. it's, yeah. it's made in a factory or in a I petri think, disc. Yeah. I think Italian leather is like the primo. Yeah. It's like the leather. nicest. Yeah. Yeah. So, but like, is it worth it? No. Nah. No. Nah, man. You're gonna Weren't the Jordan, the Jordan anyway, 2 is made yeah. in Italy out of like the very, very first ones. I mean, like 19. I think so. Yeah. 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 Whatever. Yeah. They were made in Italy. Wasn't that supposed yeah. to be like the, the fashion, high fashion mm -hmm. designer kind of yeah. thing? So you don't think that you would pay for a Jordan 1 with that kind of leather at that kind of price point? Good luck. Like if they made a Jordan 1, because like, there's people who reconstruct them. You can put like Jay the Ripper would like deconstruct yeah. it and make it with like calf skin or mm -hmm. something crazy. Would you pay $500 for a Jordan 1 made out of like genuine Italian leather? If it's going to be a one of one and it's just mine, then maybe. no, if it was a G, not a GR, but if it was a release to the public and they were like, yeah, you could buy the sale ones in the synthetic or no. you can buy the sale ones in the genuine Italian made in Italy by hand mm -hmm. factory. Would you, What's the difference? would you care? It's still the same thing. It looks the same. You know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. if it looks the same, if the leather's like, if the synthetic looks and feels similar to the authentic Italian shit, I don't then... think it would feel the same. I think it would. I think that I'm happy with Jordan 1 leather yeah. for what I'm paying, mm. if that oh, yeah. makes sense. Oh, Even yeah. Jordan leather, to be honest. Yeah. Because if you look at prices, like, 835 is kind of a stretch for off-white. Like, that's deep. Yeah. Like, Virgil needs to relax. But common the Promen Projects, like, a good pair of dress shoes is already up there mm -hmm. already. Mm -hmm. So, 540 for a genuine leather sneaker mm -hmm. seems reasonable. I mean, it's a lot of money, but it, it seems... It looks good. Yeah. It looks good, and the quality's obviously up there. Like, it's genuine leather. It's going to wear yeah. really well. Mm -hmm. um, but I think I'm happy with where I'm at in the sense that if that's what we would have to be paying for really true quality, mm -hmm. then I'm good where we're at. Yeah. I agree, too. Like, I don't see any quality control issues in the sense that if that's what 540 is for genuine leather, really soft, made in Italy, mm -hmm. and I'm paying 215 for made in China... Then mm. I think I'm happy. Yeah, Jordan me the ones 15, are pretty good. Man. Give me the yeah. 215. Do you think we would notice? Like I said, if they made a sale one in genuine leather and they made one in the synthetic that we all have, would you notice the difference? Do you think? No. 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 Even just from feel. Like if you if you were to actually feel the material, I'm sure you could feel it. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. How often are you yeah. gonna go into your collection and actually touch and just the touch shit it? Like that, yeah. Yeah. Do you think like, it would wear different? Because I think the shape of the shoe just is going to ask for creasing already. I've, mm -hmm. I've seen people who rock common projects and those crease exact same as if I was going to rock a fucking Adidas mm -hmm. Stan Smith. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like they'll still crease where it's going to crease. Yeah. It might just, I don't know, the leather might just last longer because it's a bit softer mm -hmm. and it might not peel off or whatever. Yeah. But, but we're not getting our shoes to that point. If anyways, you're a sneakerhead, right? you don't really have to worry about that because you have a lot of shoes in your rotation. Yeah, in the you're first not wearing place. the same pair every day, anyways. Mm -hmm. And I feel like Common Projects is more for the individual who doesn't really have a collection and just needs that one sneaker for their wardrobe yeah. as a staple because they don't have a choice or they don't need mm -hmm. a choice. Mm -hmm. Do you think there complex. is a comfort difference? Do you think there would be? Because I don't. Just off the top of my head, I feel like Jordans would be more comfortable. I know. I'll project. go try on a pair of Common Projects and let y'all yeah, know. Yeah, once again, too rich for my blood. At yeah. the same time, it's like it, it's a flat shoe. Yeah. It looks like a generic. There's like, no tech in it, obviously. Yeah, it's not like, a performance shoe. I mean, mm -hmm. maybe it has a, like, a leather insole or maybe. something. Maybe. But at the same the time, I think it's so just much. two different lifestyles. Like, you know what I yeah. mean? Yeah. 
Like you're you're rolling in that kind of money, then then do you, right? Yeah, but half yeah. time is for the look you know too, I mean? man. Like, yeah, if that's you, do you? But it's a waste, from in my opinion. Yeah, yeah. So you don't think it's worth it? No, I think we're all happy where we're at. Yeah. So we touched on it a little bit, but the high quality retros. Um, so obviously the only ones I could think of, unless there's other ones you can think of, the JTH, um, Jordan three, and then the cause fours, cause fours retailed at 500 Canadian. Yes, they did. Um, Alvin knows cause he paid retail lucky guy. Mm-hmm. Um, was it worth it? Do you think in hindsight, obviously, yeah, like cause fours have triple quadrupled in value. So duh. But at the time, if there was no resale, if it was just a regular, not going to say regular because it's still a cause collaboration, but if there was no upsell on it or there was no aftermarket, do you think just based on quality that five hundred dollars is worth it for that shoe? For that shoe, yeah, because it's there, cause. like the design yeah. on it, the thought, like everything about the shoe is dope. Yeah, mm-hmm. uh, from its color to the materials to the uh, embossed like designs on it to the midsole to the outsole, like anything and everything in it was like dope as dope as f right yeah. so it's just like and if you're a fan of cause like who cares like, for what sure. the resale is right absolutely like, yeah see it's a it's a tough i mean that's a tough example because there is so much going on other than just the really high quality behind yeah. it mm-hmm. um but yeah like i don't know just solely based on quality if i think it's worth it if I take away, it, you can't because it's there. But if you take away the cause collaboration part of it, I don't really care for an all gray four. If it was just an all gray four, if it was no. just an all gray four with some cool detailing that wasn't a cause collab, like you can't take it out of your mind. But if it wasn't there, yeah, I don't know if the five hundred dollars is worth it. Mm. And because he's an artist and because his work is expensive, the shoe wasn't cheap. But I don't think that quality alone made it worth it to me. Mm. What would you guys say is the highest quality shoe you own? Can you think of just off the top of your head? What did yours be the band ones, Joel? Yeah. 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 It's up there. And like have they worn in well? Do you wear them often? I do give them a burn like every now and then. Yeah. Um, and they're just like you said, the way that they're creasing. Yeah. It's not like the horizontal. Yeah. It's not really like vertical. It's just it's wear. Like, it's just, yeah. It's just the way that it wears. Yeah. yeah. It's just perfect, right? So I don't know. I like I like the way that they're they're coming in. What about you, Alvin? What's, what can you think is the highest quality shoe you own? The 990. Ooh. Oh, yeah? V5. I mean, there's probably something in my something else in my collection that has yeah. like a stupid amount of quality. But as yeah. of right now, like, in ter- especially in terms of the stuff that's coming out recently mm. and quote unquote quality, that, that shoe specifically has really good quality. It's shining for you? Yeah. It does. Yeah. It's, it's a good quality. I think. Cause fours are definitely up there. The JTH is definitely up there. Sale mm-hmm. ones are even up there for me because I don't oh, yeah. own shattered backboards to know the difference. Me neither. Um, yeah. Like again, once again, not rich enough. Um, but, but like the bio beige, they're good, man. Those crease like how you say, like they just they don't they just I, wear. It well. might just be the I don't know. The thing is, I wore mine. I only wore. I have a half size up. The one that I got a little bit early, the the three weeks early, whatever, yeah. is a half size up. It's a nine and a half. So I've worn it with a force field that I didn't even know I still owned, <laughs> but I, I wore it with a force field every single time because it's a half size too big. So I don't even know. Yeah. Um. Shout out to force fields for making them look brand new <laughs> after I beat them. Um. But yeah, they crease well. Like they've been wearing in well. Yeah. Yeah. I, at least I think so. Like it doesn't. There's no like creasing like you can tell there's some sort of indentation there yeah from when you wear them but, but it's like, just not that like it's not even a hairline it's just like a crack it looks not even a crack bro like, it's, it's just gross it's like a fold i don't know what to call it i don't know what it is but it's cool it looks like that space between like your shoulder your arm and your uh like peck like when you squeeze and a little fold of skin it looks like that oh. <laughs> 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 um so why do you think it's so inconsistent like why is it always a question when every shoe comes out the first question everyone always asks maybe after how much is it and can i get it is how's the quality first time anyone gets it in hand like i know if i post something and if i get something how's the quality mm-hmm. why is it so inconsistent to the point where we have to ask every single time how's the quality why why can't they just use the same leather why don't they are they choosing to what are your thoughts because it's synthetic Mm-hmm. It's just inconsistent. Uh, they just, I don't know. They just haven't found a formula to consistently make it that good. I don't, I don't know how synthetic works. But <laughs> yeah. There's some science between Probably, yeah, somewhere. Yeah. You, know what I mean? like, you think it's just literally how it's being made? 
Yeah. 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 So you don't think it's a choice? Like they're not like, okay, this one needs really good quality. Well, you're really gonna waste. So let's say you mass produce a material for a shoe, and then you 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 make the shoe and you realize that it's shitty material. Yeah. You're gonna mm-hmm. waste all that mass produced material. Well, you would make the material that. first, I would assume. But yeah, I guess once it's made. Yeah, but you mass yeah. produce that material. Yeah. You know what I mean? And you're not gonna really make it into the form of the shoe until it's. I guess you're ready to. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. I don't know how Nike works. I'm thinking also, that's the process. Yeah, true. Um, but like once you have it on that shoe and you realize that it doesn't stretch properly, it doesn't crease properly, it doesn't wear properly, then it's too late. You're still gonna make it. Yeah. You know what I mean? You're not gonna waste all that material just because like oh my god it's it's crappy and or like people are still gonna buy it yeah still gonna sell out yeah Yeah. still gonna sell you you don't think that people actually care about quality like at the end of the day do but they don't i honestly don't think people really care i mean like you just ask just to ask half the time yeah Yeah. i think it's just a more of a question just because people don't have anything else to say about it it? yeah Yeah. they don't have any other thoughts like i think people are just so out of tune with anything else except for is it a collab and how's the quality yeah that's just what people's questions are Mm -hmm. like i really don't think people care if you look at the Travis Scott fours from last year, like the quality was not garbage, but, <laughs> but really bad. Yeah. It was really bad, and they still sold out, and they still resell for the six, seven hundred dollars right yeah, now. Man. Like I don't think at the end of the day, if the collab is there or the name is there, people really care. Yeah. Maybe mm-hmm. they care a little bit if it's not a hype shoe, and they're just looking for a reason to buy it. Like like for example, the sale ones. Maybe they care a little bit because it's hey, it's a good quality shoe, and it was easy to get, but. I don't know because compared to the cause fours like those two shoes aren't even in the same galaxy yeah yeah like not even close so do you think at the end of the day it really matters like does quality really matter yeah especially when we're talking Jordans does it yeah yeah the only reason I bought the turbo greens is because I was able to see them in person yeah and because like from what I saw at that moment in time like it looked good so for that specific shoe it matters if it was like fuck if it was like plastic or like that yeah. plasticky like leather, no, nah, no way I would have had those in my collection at all. So quality in the sense that it's high tier for Jordan, but not high tier in the grander scheme of things. I think that's fair to say, right? Yeah, mm-hmm. that's yeah. fair. It depends on the shoe. Yeah, like if I'm buying a New Balance, I'm not going to question the quality right now. True, because yeah. they've been so consistent mm-hmm. with their. They've always been really consistent with their stuff. Yeah, you know what I mean. Whereas, like, but once again, sorry to cut you off. That's no. made in USA or made in like it's not made in yeah. a, Ch- a Chinese sweatshop per yeah. se. Like it's, mm-hmm. uh, you can clearly see the difference between these, like where they're made, the yeah. materials they use. I don't know. Like, do you think that Jordan or Nike or Adidas or these more high volume brands that are more quote unquote trendy should be concerned? Like, do you think people will start caring to the point where they'll stop buying it? No. Or do you think no. that they'll change? Because New Balance can pump out a shoe for two fifty, which is the same as a retro price, with insanely better quality and better comfort. But it doesn't sell. But it doesn't sell. Yeah. So it, people can't really care about quality that much. Like, there's got to be more to it. It's the hype, man. It yeah. is. Definitely. Shout out to Kawhi for putting New Balance back on the map. Yeah, for oh, real. Yeah, man. Can't, can't wait till those come out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I really want to pair those. What do they call it? Omni Two or something like yeah. that. I think it's yeah. called. Sick. Um. But yeah, I don't think people actually care and I don't think it really matters no. at the end of the day, to be honest. Because like we said, if people really did care, they'd be buying common projects mm-hmm. or other crazy stuff or they'd be investing mm-hmm. in higher quality st- materials. Like New Balance or even Asics has really good quality stuff too. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know. You guys have any final thoughts before we wrap this thing up? Thank you to everyone who has supported and or been a part of this podcast. Wherever you're taking in the episode, please leave a comment, review, follow, and or subscribe. We've got a Facebook group. We excuse as a forum, sell some stuff, and connect with you guys. That's facebook.com slash groups slash CGS dot talk. We've got a website for our reviews, recap stories, and much, 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 much more. That's Canada.Soul. .ca. If you have any questions or suggestions for any of our segments like the Soul Poll, Sneakerheading for Dummies, or the Fire Round, shoot us a DM or email us at CanadaGotSoul at gmail.com. Don't forget to use hashtag CanadaGotSoul on Instagram for a feature. I have been your host, Lawrence Hopkins. You can find me at LDoggyStyles on Instagram. Woof. I'm Joel Hernandez. You can find me at Joe Dooney, J O underscore D three O's N E Y. My name is Alvin Quincy, and you can find me at M I S T E R Q and then Mart. Thank you for listening to us talk about sneakers for 58 episodes, and please remember to rock your kicks. 
We are going to go watch some sports now. This has been True to Size. We have been CGS, and we are Audi. Peace. Peace. Let's go, leaves. <laughs> yeah, we don't belong. <laughs> <laughs> Voila! Voila!